Another year, another set of games to eagerly anticipate playing until our eyeballs fall out. 2016's games lineup is already looking stacked, and E3 is the place we'll get to see even more from our favourite heroes, dragons, cars, mutants, and whatever else the developers decide to dream up. So what should you be on the lookout for this year? Here are 18 games to get excited about at E3 2016. Destiny 2 We don't know for sure that Destiny 2 will be announced at E3 2016, but mounting evidence certainly seems to suggest we'll see something Destiny shaped. If we do see it, it'll be at Sony's show, as Activision itself isn't having a press conference at this year's event. As for why it's worth getting excited over, you only need to look at how much vanilla Destiny has changed since launch. Three expansions later, Destiny finally has a leveling system that makes sense, more customization options, and a story that, well, it has a story now. If Destiny is the proof of concept, look to Destiny 2 as the game that will prove the formula not only works, but can be truly exceptional, providing Bungie adds matchmaking to raids, that is. Dishonored 2 All we've seen of Dishonored 2 thus far is the gorgeous cinematic debut trailer from last year's E3, but that footage, combined with the stellar pedigree of the first game, was more than enough to stoke the fires of supernatural assassination hype. We know we'll see the first public gameplay demo during Bethesda's conference, and that you'll be able to choose between playing as Corvo or his almost definitely daughter Emily. It's due for release November 11th. Battlefield 1 The Battlefield 1 reveal caused quite a stir, and with good reason. Heading back to World War 1 feels, ironically, like the breath of fresh air the series needs. And the response to the announcement trailer has been unprecedented. What's got us excited? It's the promise of more intimate combat with shorter range weaponry and melee implements featuring more heavily. On top of that, the setting should be genuinely fresh, plus the prospect of new classes, heaps of vehicles, horses, and the ability to pilot a zeppelin or battleship. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare it's not just guns this year, but space guns, and the Call of Duty Modern Warfare remake. In the no way confusing combination of Infinite Warfare being developed by Infinity Ward, the series is finally taking one giant step for shooter kind and launching the series properly into far future sci-fi. After the exoskeleton half measures of recent games, this isn't just firing you into the stars in a spaceship, it's making you the captain, having to shoulder the responsibility of command while fighting rogue off-world colonists. Precise details are still a bit teasy, but we know there'll be planetary combat and space fighting in both fighters and spacesuits. There's hints of Halo and Starship Troopers here as well, despite the human enemy, and given COD's tendency to cannibalise tropes, ideas and lines wholesale from films, expect this to pillage every sci-fi film this side of Metropolis. Mafia 3 The surprise hit of last year's Gamescom, a recent two-hour play of the historical open-world crime spree, revealed that the best of the series is still present and correct, but reshaped to create a far more involved free-roaming experience, with freedom and tactical choices at its core. Beating down the mob means hitting all of their going concerns so that you can take over. And your means of doing that are varied and vast. Assassination, destruction of property, good old-fashioned theft, all are open to be tackled, and in any way you see fit. Go loud, go through it, get creative with explosives and traps, or snipe a target from across the road and walk away. There's almost a light touch of Metal Gear and Hitman in anti-hero Lincoln's freedom to get the job done, making Mafia 3 the open-world game to keep your eye on this year. Watch Dogs 2 what do we know about Watch Dogs 2? Well, very little outside some leaked concept art, and a handful of tweets suggesting that the tone and the gameplay will be very different to what it was in the original. That's no bad thing, Aiden Pierce isn't the most distinct or memorable of characters, and the grim Chicago setting put a downer on what was actually a fun blend of old-fashioned shooting and newfangled hacking. Speaking of which, it seems likely the setting will change, although expect some elements of the original's narrative to remain. Ghost Recon Wildlands The Division, while imperfect, has whetted our appetite for co-op Clancy, making Ghost Recon even more of a thrilling prospect. Last year's E3 revealed the game, and gave everyone a good idea of how it will play. Essentially, it's like Far Cry, but with military dudes. And while drop-in, drop-out cooperative play is going to be the best way to play Wildlands, because who doesn't want to plan free-form missions across a massive, buried open world with their buddies, there is an option to just battle through on your lonesome. Mass Effect Andromeda it's definitely time to move on, and the lack of a 4 at the end of Andromeda is a very clear sign we're moving into fresh and uncharted territory without our beloved Commander Shepard. Given the fact that we still don't have a name for our hero, expect that to finally be revealed at this year's E3, we're also hoping to see footage of the teased increased exploration, more vehicles and settlement building as humans colonise the Andromeda galaxy. And hey, did someone say something about jetpacks? Horizon Zero Dawn 
Civilization as we know it is a thing of the ancient past in Horizon Zero Dawn, but this new world is vibrant and thriving with bizarre new creatures roaming the land. We've seen futures that go high tech and those that go low, but Horizon looks to be blending the two in a new and intriguing spin on the open world adventure as Alloy takes down mighty techno beasts with her bow, her arrow and her wits. We don't know a darn thing about the story yet, so hopefully E3 will clue us in. Resident Evil 7 it's been a long, hard road to the obvious, but it sounds like Capcom is finally rebooting Resident Evil back to its survival horror roots. Perhaps the undeniable, critically battered mess of Resident Evil 6 is responsible. Perhaps the ongoing success of real, first-person horror in the indie sector, and the towering popularity of PT. But whatever the reason, it sounds like the sensible move is now being made. If the rumoured involvement of Jordan Romaro, a developer on PT and Metal Gear Solid 5, turns out to be true, then the return to form could be legitimately barnstorming. Gears of War 4 Gears of War 4 is a fresh start on pretty much every level. We have a new developer led by ex-epic man Rod Ferguson, and we have a new cast and story, picking up 25 years after Gears 3 with Marcus Phoenix's son, JD. But perhaps most importantly, we have a clean slate. Gears 4 is sweeping away the last couple of games' success and stripping things back to the basics of the 2006 original. Fear, tension, close, demanding combat, a two-player co-op limit, and a setup where a single enemy is enough to scare the crap out of you. Deus Ex Mankind Divided it's going to be an interesting time for Adam Jensen in the next Deus Ex. While the previous game had a range of possible endings, Mankind Divided picks the one where all augmented people went crazy. As a result, anyone with enhancements is now treated like a criminal, and it's basically a bad time for people with robot bits. Cue resistance and Adam's new role hunting down rogue orgs. This instalment promises to nail the freedom that the previous games didn't quite perfect, with new gear and hopefully more freedom, building on what already works from before. So that means better shooting if you want to take the action route, and more exciting non-lethal options if you still want action, but with a lower body count. GT Sport In some ways, GT Sport is more of the same. Tracks, cars, realism, and a raft of rather polite menu tunes. However, that's not necessarily a bad thing. This iteration's big new thing is esports and competitive racing, so expect all manner of leagues and online options. Perhaps that's not for everybody, but isn't competition the very essence of racing? Even if it's proving that you can get round the circuit quicker than anyone else on the planet. Final Fantasy XV after 10 years of development hell and a false start as a spin-off from a previous entry, Final Fantasy XV is beginning to take shape as a very real game that you'll be able to play on September 30th of this year. But despite the recent uncovered event and two playable demos released to the public, there's still a lot of mystery surrounding how everything will fit together in the final version. What are our J-Rock bands of heroes up to in their slick convertible? Why are there so many giant monsters living next to fairly busy freeways? And how will the game actually play? E3 is one of the last big stops before the game's release just a few months later, so here's hoping Square gives us a substantial look at what Final Fantasy XV really has to offer. Titanfall 2 Titanfall was a hell of a good time and an engaging spin on multiplayer shooters. Did grabbing a pilot out of their Titan ever get old? No. No, it did not. Neither did shooting down a dropship at the last moment, foiling the other team's escape. The game had lots of great ideas, but what it didn't have was any kind of single player mode, and with just a handful of game types and maps, it all began to feel too thin too quickly. Hopefully, Titanfall 2 will build on what came before, delivering the fast paced, wall running, mech punching combat we adored, along with enough variety to keep players around for the long haul. Zelda NX and Zelda Wii U the Legend of Zelda Wii U is still a bit of a mystery at the moment. Nintendo has been coy about revealing too much about it, we haven't seen Link in his traditional green garb, and there are no clues about the story whatsoever. What we do know is there's open world gameplay, and it will be the only Nintendo game at the show, despite being delayed into 2017. It will be playable though, and there are also rumours the game could end up on Nintendo's NX, so it might be the game that showcases the capabilities of the new console. Crackdown Crackdown has gone a bit quiet since Gamescom 2015, but expects explosions, literally and figuratively, at Microsoft's press conference. The game's ambitious plans to use the power of the cloud to create an enormous city with persistent damage makes this one of the most promising action games of the year. How it accelerates the busting up of that city, however, remains to be seen. Action games have moved on since the last Crackdown, and superhero movies are intensely hot right now, so Xbox owners will be expecting something truly special from this one. For Honor Samurais, knights and vikings battling to the death. 
what's not to love? Ubi surprised us with this multiplayer hack and slash last year, and that means we're hoping for a pre-Christmas release date and plenty more juicy info. From what we played last year, the combat initially takes a bit of getting used to, but once you get it, it suddenly all clicks violently into place. There's seas of enemies on each battlefield, but it boils down to a tense 4 on 4 skirmish, where only those with the fastest thumbs can reign victorious. Butter mashers need not apply. And that's 18 games to look forward to at this year's E3. There are obviously loads more, but if we went through them all, this video would never end. So instead, why not let us know about your most anticipated in the comments below, and we'll be sure to get you all the details direct from the show floor. Thanks for watching, and for more gaming news, reviews, previews, and features, keep it here on GamesRadar Plus.